Hello everyone! Before we get started, I just wanted to introduce you to today's sponsor, Babbel. Babbel is the number one language learning app in the world with more than 10 million subscriptions worldwide. Many years ago, I took a French class just because I needed it for a language credit, but now that I'm older, I really wish that I had kept up with it. And that's why I'm using Babbel to freshen up on my French and possibly even integrate some French characters to my videos. Babbel's lessons are built by over 150 language teachers. Other apps use machine learning algorithms and AI technology. A few new and fun features that they have added are language learning games, short stories, podcasts, and culture clips. Now, let's take a look at my progress. Bonjour! Vous voulez un croissant? Oh, oui! Vous pouvez un café avec moi? Oui, bien sûr! Avec plaisir! So if you'd like to learn a new language today, Click the link in my description box below and get up to 50% off a Babbel subscription. Thank you so much to Babbel for sponsoring me today, and let's move on to the video. Oh. Hello there, traveler. Welcome to our tavern. What can I get for you today? You know, you look sort of familiar. Have you ever been to this town before? You have. You know what? I know what I know you from. You, you are... <laughs> hey. Hey, it's... Guess who's here? The adventure... Yes. They're right here. I know. Okay, listen. Whatever you want is on the house. Yes, please, I insist. You are the adventurer that took care of the bandits that were stealing our shipments. Yes. So you have helped us dearly. I, this is a family-owned tavern, and you have no idea how much you helped us. So again, I insist. Whatever it is you want, it's on the house. So, what can I get for you today? Some wine. Okay. Um, do you know what sort of wine you'd like? We have a very a wide selection. Hmm, you aren't sure? Okay. Well, I might be able to pick out a wine for you. I just need to know, um, what are some of your preferences? Do you like the lighter wines or the darker wines? Okay, so you're more of a fan of the lighter wines, but you aren't afraid of a red. All right. Um, do you know if you like it to be more fruity or more like earthy and herbal? Okay, more fruity. All right. Um, hmm. How sweet do you like your wine to be? You aren't sure? Okay, that's totally fine. Yes. Absolutely. I think that I have just the selection for you. Have you ever had a wine tasting? Where I show you a variety of wines and we taste them all and then you choose at the end which one you'd like? Oh, please. I would love to do a wine tasting with you. How about it? You would. Okay. Good. All right. Um... Let me go grab, let me go grab something. Alright, so I have our first wine. It has already, obviously, been served a little bit, but um, every wine is opened on the night, and uh, it is kept, uh, kept nicely, so that it's still fresh, so don't worry about it being used. <laughs> But before we get to the wine, I need you to take this bottle of fresh ice cold water. And the reason that you need this is 
just because in between each wine, I'm going to need you to take a sip to cleanse your palate. That way, um, the previous wine doesn't interfere with the flavors and the notes of the next wine. Sounds good? Alright. I'll go ahead and set this over here for you. Okay. So, shall we get started? Good. I have a glass for you here. And I'm going to be tasting along with you so that I can help you through it. How's that? Good. Okay. This one is a white wine. It's kind of hard to see because it's been used, but... Let's go ahead and pour some for you. It is a white blend. But it also is uh, sparkling. We give healthy samples here. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and give this to you. And I poured myself some over here to pre prepare. <sighs> okay. So you're telling me you haven't done a wine tasting before. So I'm going to walk you through the first one. So as I said, this is a sparkling white wine. You can tell a lot by the color of the wine. So this one has some yellow to it, actually quite a lot of yellow to it. And that could either mean that something to do with the grapes maybe that it was made from, or that it was aged in a certain way. Like maybe it was aged in a oak barrel. <laughs> but don't worry, it won't interfere with the flavors at all. Some wines do have a bit of an oaky taste to it, depending on how long it was aged, but this one it does not interfere. <laughs> it's just probably how it was aged. So this one comes from the uh, Highland District, which is very local. I'm not sure if you're from here, but the Highland District is very much near here. <laughs> um, if you get a chance, I recommend touring their vineyards. It's a very fun experience. So, the first thing that we are going to do is sniff our wine. <sighs> like this. Now, what is the point of sniffing wine? Well, to uh, kind of dis uh, discern what sort of notes you're smelling. And the reason behind that is, for example, this one I get very strong apricot notes. And now that I've identified that there's apricot in the wine, when I taste it, it'll be easier for me to taste. So humans, um, we smell what we eat and uh, we smell as we eat. So it's sort of how we taste. So again, if you have already identified a flavor as you are uh, tasting it, it sort of makes it pop, if that makes sense. Okay, so this wine is also a medium in terms of aroma, which means that when I smell it, it doesn't punch me in the face with this flavor, but it is not too hard to sniff out when I'm uh, these notes. So definitely apricot and peach are some notes that you can smell right away. But let's go ahead and swirl it. Very gently, don't want to over swirl it so that it falls out of your cup, but go ahead and swirl it up. And this way we're adding air to the wine. And aerating the wine helps to bring up all those flavors that were otherwise hiding. <laughs> so let's take another smell. So I don't, did you notice how much more aromatic it is? And those apricot notes are just so much more vibrant. Let, let me read the back here. So, it says, Ripe orchard fruit flavors shine in this wine. Lifted citrus and soft floral notes. Hmm. Add a complexity to this full-bodied fruity wine. Refreshing acidity. Interesting. 
Okay, so it says that the other notes here are pear and elderflower. So I don't smell the pear or the elderflower right away, but let's go ahead and taste it and see if we catch any of those. And when you're taking a sip, um, don't be afraid to sip loudly because uh, that way you are bringing air into uh, the sip and it's spraying it across your palate. So something like this. See how I sort of um, sipped? Uh, I suppose it's not how you were taught to sip at the dinner table, but in this sense it's good because it sprays those flavors across all parts of your tongue. And it also aerates it at the same time. So let's try and see what sort of flavors we're picking out here. This is a good wine. <laughs> One of my favorites. So, I definitely taste the elderflower now. Those floral sort of notes. Elderflower itself is also um, a bit fruity. Um, oh, it's it really rounds out all the flavors and it kind of cuts any um, sort of citrusy um, flavors that maybe maybe it was too citrusy, but then the elderflower sort of envelops it and makes it less so. It is. Um, more of an acidic wine, not too acidic. Um, you don't want it to be too acidic because then it's very tart and hard to drink because it makes you kind of pucker because it's very sour. But you also don't want a wine to be not very acidic because then it's bland and flat. And we don't want that. We, we want a fun wine. <laughs> so this, this has a higher acidity, but not too high. So let's, I'm trying to see if I can identify any pear in there. So it is definitely overshadowed by the apricot. The apricot is very, um, it's like the forefront of the taste. Um, it is refreshing. It is full bodied, which means it is heavy on your tongue, like as it sits on your tongue, it's heavy. Um, but it is still refreshing at the same time, so I do agree with what they have to say. I think what makes it refreshing is those fruity flavors. <laughs> but um, it does linger a bit on the palate. It's definitely a sweet wine. Um, I am a fan of sweets, so of course I would like this wine. Um, yeah, very good. Uh, why don't we go on to the next one? What do you say? Oh, well, I was thinking maybe you would make your choice after all the wines and then perhaps we could get a dinner going for you. We make wonderful food here as well. In fact, maybe I'll give you a... How about I give you a tasting pairing with all of these wines? Uh, just a suggestion. <laughs> of course, you know, we can't make all that food for you and you'd be way too full. But for this one, I'd say because of the uh, acidity, it would cut really well through um, a fatty, greasy chicken, which fatty and greasy sounds gross, but uh, like a nice roast chicken, just delicious. I think this would pair really well with. And we do have that here, so. Okay, something to think about and let's move on to the next wine, all right? Alright, so the next one I have here is a red wine. You can obviously tell by the color here. I thought I would sort of show the difference between the white and the red. This is also a sparkling uh, wine as well, but it's a red blend. Um, I just like sparkling wines. I think they're good for special occasions, which I think this is. And I like the fizzy sounds. So, another sparkling wine. Let's give it a try. Okay. So this one is from Briarwood, which is mm, not very close, but uh, it's, it's kind of a long journey, but you'd make it in a day or two. 
Uh, Briarwood is a really nice place as well. Um, I like to go vacation there sometimes. Anyway, enough about Briarwood. <laughs> the wine. So, this is a beautiful dark ruby colored wine. And it might be hard to see, but there's definitely some carbonation bubbling up here. So let's take a sniff and see what we smell. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. This is a very aromatic wine. I barely need to put my nose close to this to be able to smell it because... Oh my goodness. What do you think you smell? Berries? Very good. You know, you're kind of... That is actually really impressive that you were able to pick that out. <laughs> um, anything else that you smell? You weren't sure? Okay, so, for me... Well, <laughs> I'm clumsy. I really hope I don't break anything. <laughs> for me, the hibiscus just punches in you, in the, you in the face with that aroma. It's just, oh my goodness, it smells amazing. Um, so the notes in this are also elderberry um, and black cherry and vanilla. So um, I don't really, I do smell the black cherry, but I don't really smell the elderberry or vanilla. So let's sort of give it a swirl, get that air in there. Okay, so, let's take another smell. <sighs> wow, okay, so, after aerating it, it definitely defines the, <laughs> the black cherry a lot. Wow, it smells amazing. Let's take a sip. So this one is definitely tart, <laughs> but I, I would expect no less from the elderberry and the black cherry. Let's see what it says on the back. So a full-bodied and bold wine bursting with ripe, dark fruits, soft tannins, and a gentle vanilla finish. All right. <laughs> so I, yes, I definitely taste those dark berries. And it's interesting because when you smell it, you definitely smell the hibiscus. But when you taste it, it's definitely more subtle. The vanilla is kind of all-encompassing. I didn't smell it in the wine. But when you taste it, it sort of, it gives just like a blanket of vanilla and kind of softens those flavors of the berries. So it is tart, but that vanilla sort of... It's kind of like drinking milk after you drink something tart, I suppose. I'm not sure how to explain it, <laughs> but it definitely balances out those flavors. This, I have to say, is my favorite. It is so good. I could drink several glasses of this easy. It's my favorite. Um, it's not super sweet, which I, I like. I like that. I don't like it when it's too sweet because it just feels like I'm drinking dessert. Mm. But I'm not a huge fan of drier wines either, usually. Because, um, I, again, I'm, I'm a sweet person. I don't like it too sweet, but I like it a little bit sweet. <laughs> yeah, so this is perfect for me. How do you like it? You do? It's definitely um, a bit of a mix of, again, it's a red blend, so it's not a very full-bodied red wine. It's a very easy-drinking red wine, so I agree with you there. So if you were going to choose this one, I would say to pair it with a red meat, for sure. Um, you know what? We have a stew that our cook makes here that is so good. It's made with um, carrots and celery and um, some onions and peas in there. Oh my gosh, you have to try it. But 
we serve it with mashed potatoes on the side as well. It's If you want a very heavy, hearty dinner, that would be for you. So, it's an option. Again, let's wait until we get through all of the options before we decide. So let's move on to the next one, shall we? Alright, so this next one is the last of our sparkling wines that I'm going to show you tonight. Again, it has been a few glasses have been poured from this. Uh, but this is a rosé. You can tell by this. The more, again, rose color. Uh, it's very pink. Um, I do love rosés. A lot of them are very similar to me. But I will, I may show you, hmm, I'll, I'll wait on that one, it's a secret. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pour a glass of this. So this one is from far away. It is from the province of Flowers. Um, it's the second time I've ordered this wine. It was very popular the first time, and so we ordered it again. And uh, yeah, I'm delighted to show it to you. So let's take a smell. So this one is not very aromatic at all. I'm having a hard time even getting the note that I'm getting, which is sweetness. Um, a lot of roses have strawberry hints into them, in them, and this one definitely does. But that's really all I'm smelling. So let's go ahead and aerate it. Okay, so it definitely opened up the smell a bit. It's much easier to smell, but I'm still only getting the strawberry notes. So let's take a sip and see what we can taste. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. This one isn't my favorite. It's still very good. I could definitely drink a glass of this, but it's not really doing it for me. But that's okay. How do you like it? Okay, good. Good. So let's read a little bit on the back here. So this fresh and fragrant wine has notes of strawberries and delicate hints of rose. Elegant bubbles on the palate, yes, red fruits linger through the finish. So it looks like the other notes are rose and raspberry. When I taste it, I definitely get the raspberry, but it's more of a, a finishing note uh, after you've finished swallowing. The, the note that lingers for me is raspberry. Definitely very strawberry um, in the beginning. The rose, um, it is very subtle. The thing is, I love floral notes, so to me, even if I say oh, it's subtle, to others it might not be, but I'm just, again, a huge fan of floral notes, so let's try this one more time and try to pick out the rose. Okay, so um, it's easier like if you, um, as you're tasting it and breathing, if you breathe out your nose, it helps to smell it and taste it, um, and that's where I'm getting the, the rose notes. Very subtle, but again, to me, it's just an opinion. You might think it might, is too much, so. <laughs> I'm just gonna take one more sip. You know, you gotta give it a try. You know, you gotta give it a chance. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this one, if you're looking for something lighter, maybe you already ate before you came here. If you're looking for something lighter, I would go with this one because it pairs well with soft cheeses or say like a charcuterie board because it is pretty sweet. I'd say it's a sweet wine. Um, so desserts, it would compete in terms of flavors. So I wouldn't 
pair it with any desserts, but some cheeses that have a sharpness to it, or again, a, a lighter meat, maybe a prosciutto or something like that, it would go very nicely. And maybe even spicy dishes. Um, some wines, uh, especially rosés, can really bring out the complex flavors in a spicy dish. So if you're looking for a spicier dish, we might be able to cook something up for you. Okay, let's move on to the next one. This is the secret that I was telling you about. Well, it's not a secret, but well, we'll see. All right, so another rosé, and I know what you're thinking. Didn't you say a lot of rosés taste the same? Well, I did want to show you the difference between what two different rosés could taste like. How different wines can be even though they're the same color or the same type. So this one is very different, in a way, from the other one. And I hope you will notice. Or at least will be able to notice a little bit. This is not a sparkling wine, as you can already tell by the lack of fizziness. But I didn't want to overdo it on the sparkling wines. Okay, let's set this over here. I hope I do not spill, because goodness, I'm known for my clumsiness. <laughs> so, go ahead and take a smell of this one. And of course, mine. <laughs> All right, so. Notice how at the last one, it was just a, it was very sweet smelling. And this one smells very citrusy. And it's definitely more aromatic as I think it would be medium type of, about medium. Um, this is not really throwing its notes in my face, so let's give it a swirly swirl. And take another sniff. Okay, yep. Yeah. So, I really get, there's, there is a, a small hint of sweetness to it, but it's different than the last one more molassesy, but definitely citrusy. Let's take a look at what it says on the back here. So this elegant dry wine with bright aromas of summer fruit, soft and floral on the palate with a long crisp finish. I definitely read that a little wrong, but well. Also, this is from Friar Shire. Friar Shire. I like to uh, serve this one to uh, people who are already drunk because listening to them trying to say Friarshire, Friarshire, it's fun. <laughs> okay, so what we're getting here is notes of wild strawberries, citrus zest, watermelon, and honey. Now notice, even though that there's strawberries in this one as well, it's a little bit different, different type of strawberry. Um, Let's take a let's take a sip. See what we think. Wow, so this one is very tart. Or not tart, let's it's very acidic. So I definitely feel it in the back of my throat here. It's definitely making my mouth water a bit. <laughs> because it's it's just tart. I I, I'm guessing because of obviously the citrus notes in here. I'm thinking the citrus is probably a lemon, but it might also be an orange. I'm not um, a wine connoisseur, so that's just what I taste, and it might be different from what you taste as well. So let's take another sip. Mm. Yes, it's definitely very citrusy. Um, and like it said on the back, it's dry. So like the last one was very sweet, in my opinion. This one 
barely any sweetness. Barely any. Um, but it does have those, it's fruity, but it's not sweet. It's interesting. It's very interesting. And then there's that little bit of honey in there that gives sort of that molasses -y taste, and it gives that just very subtle, subtle hint of sweetness. Barely any. I don't really taste the watermelon. I mean, the strawberries are definitely in there. The citrus is punches you in the face. <laughs> it doesn't linger. Uh, it's not a lingering, it's a very light-bodied uh, rosé, so as I uh, drink it, uh, it doesn't, the flavors don't sit on my tongue. Whereas some of the other ones, you know, even maybe a minute after, you still sort of taste that black cherry. But with this one, it's just crisp, and it goes right down, and your mouth is watering, but you don't have any lingering tastes. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can try and taste that watermelon. I'm thinking that maybe I just, my palate is not um, advanced enough to, to taste the watermelon because that citrus is just kind of overpowering it. I mean, it's definitely, you know, the honey is, is balancing it out, but I don't really taste the watermelon. What do you taste? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that is an interesting addition to that. So, what I would pair with this, definitely a dessert. <laughs> a chocolate dessert. I mean, think about it. You have chocolate-covered strawberries and chocolate-covered oranges or lemons are very good. If you dry the lemons and you dry the oranges and you dip them in chocolate, so good. This, again, it's it's dry, which means it's not sweet. So the sweetness is, they, they won't conflict with each other, like with the last rosé. It will, it will really complement a sweetness of a rich sweetness of a, maybe a rich chocolate cake or something fudgy. So, um, do we have, uh, I'm curious, I'm sure the baker has something chocolatey here, I'm not... Are they doing the cake or the fudge bar? I can't remember what it is, but if you want dessert and you want to pair this wine with some dessert, I will definitely check on what it is we have. Okay, let's move on to our last uh, little alcoholic drink here. And I say alcoholic drink and not wine because this is actually a beer that is similar to wine in some ways. I'm not a beer connoisseur, I'm not quite sure, you know, I'm not very good at tasting beers. Um, I'm still learning the differences of some beers, the differences of the tastes, but this one has a wine sort of sense to it and that's why I wanted to show it to you. Also, it's new and uh, I wanna try it too. So, <laughs> let's move on to that one. All right. So here we have a reddish brown ale. It is tart like a wine, fruity like a wine. I don't know what the notes are. Um, I know it was matured in an oak barrel. Um, it's very com uh, complex and acidic, but in a good way. Um, I don't know where this is from at all. I am not sure because this was actually given to us by a traveling salesman. He was peddling some alcoholic beverages and he gave this to us as sort of a, a try, a little trial. So we're going to see how we like it. And if we do, maybe we're going to uh, get some wines or beverages from him in the future. So let's try this together. It's very full because I just opened it, so I'm going to try and be careful here. I don't have a beer glass, I just have this wine glass, so we're just going to have to deal with that. Oh goodness, it's fizzy. Okay. Now I don't want to 
spill this at all, so I'm just going to set this over here. Okay, here's yours. All right, and then here is my glass. So I don't know how to taste beer, so we're going to taste it as if it's a wine. <laughs> so let's go ahead and sniff it. Wow, okay. Definitely sour. You can smell the acidity because it really punches your nose. It kind of tickles your nose hairs. <laughs> Very sour. Here, let's swirly swirl it, even though it's beer. And it did nothing. It smells the same. <laughs> so that really did nothing. Okay, let's take a sip. Let's see how we like it. Wow. That's a strong taste. <laughs> but not bad. It's definitely a fruity ale, which is refreshing and I, I enjoy it. Um, wow, let's take another sip. So I'm not a huge ale drinker, so it has a definitely a taste I can't describe. I'm not sure how to describe this. I assume that that's what the sour part is. Hmm. Or maybe it's the yeast or something that I'm tasting. Hmm. Interesting. It's still very good. I would still drink a glass of this or a pint of that, but I think it would, um, I don't think I'd be able to drink more than one because it is such a strong flavor and it is very sour and tart in a good way. But because of that, I think that it probably wouldn't be good on my stomach. <laughs> I'm not sure what to, uh, pair with this. Um, Again, because I don't know much about ale, but uh, if you like it and you don't really want to eat anything, or if you want to eat something that maybe I haven't already suggested, you can go with that as well. I know it's not a wine, but how do you feel about it? You understand how it, so you see how it's a little different with the fruity, or the same with the fruitiness. <laughs> see, you're already an expert. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna set this aside here. One more drink, maybe. Mm. Very good. This has been so much fun. I really enjoyed uh, tasting wine with you. Which one did you want to drink today? Good choice. Definitely one of my favorites. I will uh, supply you with the rest of the bottle. Yeah. Keep the glass you have. I know you have several glasses there. I'll clear out the ones that you don't want. But keep, keep the glass you have with that wine. And uh, I'll, yeah, again, I'll bring you the bottle. You enjoy. And uh, take a look at the menu. You don't have to go with the pairing that I suggested with that. Uh, you know, completely up to you. But I'll be back in a moment, and uh, I'll ask you how you, what you're thinking, what you're thinking about eating. <laughs> All right, it has been such a delight to get to know you uh, and taste wine with you. So, thank you. All right, I'll see you in a minute.